Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, a small bandsaw box. Well, not too long ago here on the show, I introduced you to this book, which is 52 Boxes in 52 Weeks by Matt Kenny. Now, while this book does not instruct you on how to make boxes, there are a lot of great ideas and a lot of great boxes in there that he has designed. And on today's show, I have been inspired by one of his boxes that I'm going to make my own version of that box. And, uh, you know, let's head over to the bench and I'll show you where we're going to start off with this project. Well, the project is going to start with a chunk of poplar that I found in the rack. And this one is one and seven eighths thick. It's four inches wide and about, I think it's six and a half inches long. This is what we are going to make the body of our box out of. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to mark the center lines on both the width and the length. Well, the first thing that I want to do is mark the perimeter and the interior cut of my box. I've set my compass here to a seven inch radius and we're just going to line up a center mark here just like this and we're going to draw the arc of one side of our box. We can then flip this around, clamp it there in place and we'll do the exact same thing on this side. We will now take a mark here, one quarter of an inch in from each one of these side edges and we will reset our compass so that it is a six and three quarter inch radius and we will draw the same radius again and this will represent the interior dimensions of our box. Now using our center point as a pivot, we will set our compass so that it lines up with the end of our board and we will draw another arc right there and then on this side as well. And just like we did on the long sides, we're gonna measure in one quarter of an inch. We're gonna reset our compass and we can draw the inside arc for our bandsaw box. Well at this point now I'm just going to mark the end grain here so that I can know how this thing goes back together and we want to take it over to the bandsaw and I'm going to set my fence at a half inch and we are going to take a half inch slice right off the bottom of our bandsaw box. Well, at this point now, I'm going to lower my blade guard and we're going to cut the interior lines here of our box. We're going to make one entry blade cut in here on the end grain and carefully work our way around until we get the interior cut. And now with that interior cut, we can take that out and we can go through and clean up some of those corners where we had to notch it to get that sharper uh, inset on the corner. So let's get that cleaned up. So what I will be doing is I will taking a, be taking a piece of sandpaper and just lightly sanding the walls of this. I want to leave the saw marks to give it that texture, but I want to take away some of its roughness. So let's give the inside of the box just a light sanding. Okay, and at this point now, what I want to do is we will apply glue in our saw kerf here, and we're going to glue this back together, clamping it very tightly to try to minimize that seam as much as we can. Well, then after that, all we can really do at that point is sit around and wait for this to be dry. 
Well, our main body piece is completely dry. And what I want to do now is you want to line up those marks. Remember, we put them there in the end so that we knew the alignment. We're going to line up our marks. I'm going to make sure that this is all in place here where I want it. I'm going to use clear packing tape and I'm going to tape this whole thing together and then we're going to head back to the bandsaw. Okay, and with everything secured, we're going to cut the outside perimeter of our box, which will make our base, that half inch piece, and our box walls the same shape and size. So just take your time and carefully cut around the outer perimeter of your box. Well, chances are during the cutting, your alignment marks to show which way the board goes would have got cut off. So my first suggestion here is to redraw them on one side of your box. So at this point now, we need to attach the bottom to our box. And I wanna try something a little different here. Well, what I have is I have a bearing guided rabbit cutting bit here. And I want to, in the bottom inside edge of our box, I want to cut a 1 8 wide by 1 8 deep rabbit. Um, I'm gonna take it in passes, a 16 inch deep first. I'll make that one pass and then I'll adjust the height of the router bit and give it another pass. Now with our piece that goes for the bottom all the way around the um, inside or the top inside edge here, I want to do the same thing. I want a 1 8 inch deep rabbit However, I want it to be a little deeper than 1 8 of an inch. So I think I'm going to go maybe a quarter of an inch on this one. So it'll just be several passes and we'll get that, uh, that rabbit routed out of this. Okay, so truth be told, I don't know what I was thinking, but I ended up routing way too much and now it doesn't fit the way that I want it to. So we're going to call it a design change and I have rerouted the original uh, 1 8 rabbit all the way around. So there are going to be some areas that don't fit due to this round corner here and this one here not being round. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this down to the bench and we're going to use a file and we'll just gently file off each one of these inside corners here of our rabbit until our, our base fits snugly into, our, uh, into the walls of our box. And it really doesn't take long before you can get that bottom to fit in here. Now you'll notice that there's a gap along the side. That was intentional. It was supposed to be a little deeper, but somebody screwed up the routing. That's okay. It's no big deal. What we're going to do now is I want to sand the bottom of this edge. We're going to do that on sandpaper mounted to three quarter MDF. And we're also going to sand the interior flat of our box. Uh, from there, I'll show you what we need to do. Okay, so at this point, we're going to dry fit our box together just like this. I'm going to take this over to the belt sander and we're going to do the entire perimeter evening up all of our edges so that our base is level or flush with the walls of our bandsaw box. And check that out. Already we've got a beautiful looking box and we haven't really finished doing anything to it yet. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the top here, same method on the sandpaper adhere to MDF, and then we're gonna do something a little different. Well, I want to add a little bit of color to this project. And if you remember, I showed you a little while ago on the show, the pre-flocked paper that Spectro Coatings Corporation had sent me to try out. And I want to place this just in the bottom of the box. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of flocked paper. I'm going to trace where our rabbit is and we're going to cut it out. 
Now there's lots of different ways that you could cut this. You can use an X-Acto knife. You can use a Cricut cutter if you have one. Or for my purposes here uh, on today's show, I'm just using plain old scissors. And we'll just check our fit. If it's a little small or a little out of whack, it's not that big of a deal because we can trim it if it's too big. If it's slightly too small, the edges of our rabbit will hide that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray this with some spray adhesive and then place it immediately down on our board, uh, clamp it down, rub it down as best I can, and uh, we'll let it set up. Well, while I'm waiting for the flocking to dry, I want to make the lid. And I have here a half inch thick piece of cherry. And what I'm going to do is making sure that I'm using the top of the box, I'm going to trace around our entire box's perimeter. And now I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and cut it out. If you're not confident in your scrolling abilities, you can scroll just outside the line and then use the belt sander to tidy it up to the line. Either way, I'm going to get this cut and then I'll come back and see you. All right, and there we go. There's our lid. But we don't want this just to sit on top like that, so we're going to need a rabbit all the way around the inside edge here. So this here is roughly a quarter of an inch wide all the way around. Um, so I'm going to do a quarter inch rabbit all the way around here. I'm probably going to go about one eighth of an inch deep just to give it something nice to seat on. And uh, well, I'll do it over the router table. You don't need another video of it. I'll see you when the rabbit's cut. Well, we'll just test fit that rabbit in our box fits really well. It's, you know what, it's a little too tight. I don't really like it that tight. So on the inside here, you'll be able to see where the edges are tight and where we're having problems. So I'm just going to place a pencil mark on those areas. And just like we did when we needed to uh, file the rabbit for our base, we're going to do the exact same thing with our lid. We're just going to file it so that it's a little cleaner fit. It's not as tight. All right, so I'm going to get that filed up and then uh, we can carry on from there. Okay, and I've given my lid a good sanding all the way around, softened up the edges. It fits really nice. I've also placed my bottom in here, dry fit, and I love the way that that little gap around there, all the way around, is present. And that is because the rabbit that is cut on our base plate is actually was cut deeper than what the rabbit is in our body. But the piece de resistance of this is, of course, the flocking. That looks absolutely beautiful, and I mean gorgeous. It's a great color of red, and the best part about this is I love the fact that there was no mess for me to do this. Normally, it's quite the process. But this right now remains all dry fit together, so I want to apply a finish to this box before I carry on any further. This couldn't be simpler. The first thing we're going to do, well, we're going to need some shellac. So I've disassembled the box and I want to coat just the inside walls here. So we're going to just brush it on with a rag. Um, all you need to do is just those inside sections. You want to try not to get any in your rabbit that's all the way around. You want to try to avoid that. If you get a little bit in there, well, you do. But for now, let's try not to. So we're going to give that two coats, possibly three. The good news is shellac dries quickly, so you won't have to wait long to give it the second coat. All right, and with that dried up, I'm going to give it a wet sanding, uh, a very light wet sanding with some 600 grit paper and a little bit of mineral spirits here. Now, if you don't have mineral spirits, you can use Varsol, anything basically to help keep the sandpaper from clogging up. Uh, we're just going to give it a light sanding and that will be the only finish we need on the inside of the box. We can then move on and glue this thing together. 
Well, we're just going to use a very light bit of glue here in our rabbit and glue our bottom in of our box. And once we get that glued in, we can clamp it up and sit it aside to dry. Well, I'm gonna run through one of the easiest finishing methods for these boxes that looks great. What I've done is on both pieces, both the lid and the box, I have wiped on two coats of shellac. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to give it a wet sanding with 600 sandpaper. And once they're dry, we'll apply one more coat of shellac. We'll just wipe it on with a clean rag. And with that final coat of shellac dry, I'm just gonna take a piece of extra fine steel wool and we're just gonna go around it, just trying to take a little bit of the sheen off of it. Not a lot, just a little bit, just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to apply a coat of wax onto this. And that is it. That is the finish. It is uh, a great finish for these boxes and it's easy and quick to do. So for a guy like me who isn't the biggest fan of applying finishes, this is perfect. And there you have it. A bandsaw box. Guys, I have to admit, in all the time that I have been woodworking, never, ever, ever, ever have I considered using the bandsaw to make this style of box. Bandsaw boxes, for me, in my mind, have always been these whimsical things that were all free-formed and freehand. I never, ever once considered making something like this, and man, I'm glad that I found this book. Uh, because that book inspired me to look outside of what it was that I had in my head as the only way a bandsaw box could be done. And I kind of take, uh, took those concepts and transferred them over to make that. And oh my goodness, it is absolutely gorgeous. So if you pair the new method that I tried with Spectro Coatings Corporation's pre-flocked paper for the bottom, man... What a combination. This is absolutely beautiful. I love it. There's several things here that um, I love about this box. Number one, I love that space all the way around the bottom between the base and the body of our box. Now, while that was 100% intentional, um, the bottom little recessed platform was not. That was nothing more than a mistake over at the router table but it was a mistake that I ended up turning around into a design feature. And I think it worked out fantastic. I really love that kind of raised base. It gives it a whole new kind of design. The other thing here that I would have never ever thought to do was to leave the saw marks on the interior of the box. But honestly, when you look at it, it almost gives it like a curly maple feel, even though it's poplar. It kind of has that wavy iridescent look to it and it's just saw marks that have been lightly sanded. I would have never ever thought to do that had I not seen this book and been inspired to make this box with the from the book. I also love the fact that instead of just using poplar for the whole thing I mixed it up and did a little subtle change and put the cherry for the lid. Honestly guys this thing is awesome. It's a beautiful box. It really is. And the combination between the book and between Spectro Coatings, Preflock paper sort of thing, the results speak for themselves, guys. This is gorgeous. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the show this week. I hope you've enjoyed the content. Um, I'm going to post a link below because just like before when I mentioned about this pre-flocked paper, uh, there is a discount code that you guys can use if you wish to get yourself some. Um, it'll, it'll nab you 30% off your orders that are over $20. So, you know what? 30% better in your pocket than in somebody else's. So take advantage of that coupon. And uh, if, if you're interested in getting some of this flocking for your box projects, it really does add a nice touch. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, click the bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. We have a ton of fun here every Tuesday and Friday. And you know what? Hopefully you're going to consider becoming a part of that. 
I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed the content. I hope that you're going to give this a try for yourself. And more importantly, I honestly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.